we're just getting organized in this field. It's a, it's a very interesting uh, field of research uh, that aims to uh, uh, greatly uh, reduce the energy consumption in electronics. And I, I think as, as we go along, you'll, you'll uh, see that uh, some of us believe that up to six orders of magnitude of uh, improvement is uh, possible. And I would also like to thank uh, the organizing committee. Uh, so uh, they're all around uh, the hall. And uh, in particular, my uh, co-chair in uh, organizing uh, this uh, meeting is uh, Jeff Boker. And um, uh, we have uh, uh, a few others. And I wonder, maybe you can just raise your hand, uh, Dimitri. Uh, can you raise your hand? And uh, uh, Adrian Ionescu. And uh, let's see, I guess uh, he'll be here uh, shortly. He's uh, also one of the speakers. Uh, we have uh, Jan Rabai, uh, Dan Raddick. Uh, there's Dan. And um, uh, the uh, George Thompson from Intel. And uh, Philip Wong is here. And uh, Naoki Yokoyama. Uh, thank you very much uh, for coming. And uh, I think uh, so far, well, you are one of the longer distance uh, participants. We'll I'll introduce some of the uh, people who came from uh, very long distances. Uh, first, uh, what is this all about? It's all about the energy consumed in, uh, uh, in uh, digital information processing. This is an example of a Google server farm. Uh, it says here it's adjacent to a power plant. It actually looks like a power plant, so it gives you some idea of uh, what the problem is that uh, we are trying to uh, solve. I, I don't think we're going to solve it at the symposium, but we'll get a pretty good snapshot of uh, where, uh, uh, where the technology is. Uh, now, uh, the, uh, the real concept here, of course, is to replace the transistor with a more efficient uh, switch. And more efficient generally means a, a switch that is uh, more sensitive and that can be actuated with a lower voltage. So we have a number of ideas, which I'm going to uh, throw out here uh, uh, for doing this. And of course, the most obvious thing to replace the transistor with is, a, is another type of transistor. And uh, so uh, what is uh, often discussed these days is the TFET, the tunneling field effect transistor. But uh, I think we'll see as we go through the discussion today, nobody seems to agree on exactly what the TFET is and, and what the mechanism of operation should be. Uh, so that, that's quite interesting. Uh, the, uh, of course, you have nanomechanical switches uh, are also good candidates. And um, uh, there are uh, other things, metal insulator uh, switches. And uh, this is electrochemical switch. So you can imagine uh, having uh, copper wires and then uh, plating out just maybe a few tens of atoms and uh, causing a short circuit and then uh, plating it someplace else and then removing it. So even electrochemically, there's a switch. It's, uh, uh, we'll hear about this at this meeting. It is most often used for uh, storage of information, but it could also be used for logic uh, if, um, uh, uh, if it could be made practical. And there, there are spin. There's uh, uh, magnetoresistive switches, uh, magnetism, and so forth. So there's many ideas. And uh, what you'll see as I'm going to go through the program with you is that uh, uh, there are the, uh, all of these ideas are going to be represented in uh, some way here at this meeting. So uh, let me... Uh, uh, introduce uh, the meeting this way by going through the program which you all have and um, uh, uh, well uh, first we're going to set the stage with what the uh, requirements are uh, but you'll see as I go as we go through the program that one of the things we've done is we've noticed this upsurge of big research centers around the world uh, dedicated uh, to uh, 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 new types of switches more efficient switches and so I've, I've downloaded their logos and so uh, we're going to hear uh, from Alan Seabaugh, and he has a, a, he's the leader of a big center called MIND, uh, which is uh, dedicated uh, to uh, uh, tunnel transistors. And uh, so that, that'll be, in it, and that'll come right up uh, 10 o'clock this morning, and that should be uh, rather interesting. Uh, I will speak after the break, and uh, I'm sort of representing uh, our center here at Berkeley, which we call the Center for Energy Efficient Electronic Science. And uh, so uh, uh, it, it's uh, my pleasure, actually, to make contact with the different uh, groups uh, uh, around the world. Uh, so, uh, for example, from Japan, we have uh, uh, Yokoyama-san uh, from, uh, 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 from Tsukuba. And uh, their uh, institute 
is called uh, the Green Nano Electronic Center. So uh, we get the viewpoint uh, from, uh, uh, from Japan on that, and that, that should be uh, very interesting. Uh, well, we also have uh, representation from uh, one of the European centers. Uh, we have um, uh, uh, Heike Riel from uh, uh, IBM Zurich, and uh, we'll also have uh, uh, representation from industry. So uh, a, uh, over here, this is a, 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 a company with a new concept uh, for uh, uh, making more uh, energy-efficient ICs, uh, maybe more at the applied level at this point uh, than some of the other talks, but it's very important for us to uh, uh, make contact with industry and uh, figure out uh, what they're doing. And also at the circuit and systems level, we'll hear from uh, Peter Wyatt at uh, Lincoln Lab. Uh, uh, now, among the worldwide centers, so I mentioned uh, two centers here in the United States, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, center, the Green Nano Electronic Center uh, from Japan. And we also have from Europe, we have uh, a center called Steeper, representing Steeper or a more sensitive or more efficient uh, transistors. And uh, uh, that, that's going to be uh, very interesting to hear uh, their viewpoint, how it differs uh, from uh, uh, for maybe from some of the other uh, uh, major centers in the world. So I think this is the first conference that has brought together uh, the participants from uh, big uh, research uh, centers dedicated to the topic of energy efficient electronics uh, from around the world. Uh, then uh, toward the afternoon today, we're going to hear about nanomechanical switching, which is one of the serious uh, approaches uh, toward uh, uh, more efficient electronics. Of, and it turns out that you can actuate the nanomechanical switches. Sometimes uh, you can actuate them with uh, uh, just uh, millivolts, and you can imagine that would be a very efficient form of uh, logic. So uh, we'll hear about that. And uh, then uh, jumping to uh, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to hear about uh, 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 more of a systems approach and uh, 3D systems, uh, how those lead to uh, lower power. <coughs> Uh, logic and ab about uh, magnetic uh, logic or, or uh, spin assisted uh, logic uh, from uh, the uh, co organizer uh, Jeff Boker. Um, uh, Philip Wong from Stanford will tell us about uh, efficiency in uh, memory and uh, storage. And uh, I mentioned uh, one of the options, uh, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, not as frequently discussed, is nanoelectrochemical switching, which we need to be very open-minded about that because it's, uh, it it's, could be very, very powerful, and uh, certainly at minimum as a storage mechanism, uh, but also uh, for doing uh, logic switching. And uh, then uh, we'll hear from Hideo Ono uh, from Japan on magnetic tunnel junctions. That's yet another switch. You know, your giant magnetoresistance, you're changing resistance, so definitely, uh, it's, a, it's a type of switch could be used for uh, communications. Uh, now, uh, finishing up on uh, Friday afternoon, uh, we're going to have a couple of talks on uh, super efficient uh, optical interconnects. Of course, the world of electronics today, it's blended with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, copper links for short distances, but for longer distances, we use optical links, but they're very inefficient. We are still representing a bit of information with tens of thousands of photons. Obviously, uh, uh, there's a need for uh, uh, improving that, and uh, literally a thousand-fold thousand improvement uh, should be possible. And we'll hear a new idea from Professor Stojanovic of MIT on um, a, uh, a, a more practical, uh, more efficient way of doing uh, silicon photonics. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, very interesting talk we're going to hear on uh, Friday afternoon uh, will be from Google, and uh, uh, the title is a little bit strange, but he insists that this is the title. And in, uh, instead of uh, minimizing uh, power usage in data centers, uh, we're going to hear about maximizing. And uh, so uh, he, obviously he has uh, some kind of paradox in mind there. But uh, uh, Talver Heath is the leader of the Google effort on uh, making uh, their data centers uh, more efficient. And uh, finally, we'll close out uh, with uh, uh, some of the uh, important uh, future applications uh, uh, that, uh, of uh, electronics, uh, which involve um, low power 
uh, sensor networks, and uh, energy efficiency is going to be very important there. So you can see that it, uh, it, it uh, shapes up to be a very exciting conference and an opportunity uh, for people working in parallel, even on different continents, uh, to meet, and I especially appreciate the long distance uh, that uh, our uh, Japanese visitors and our European visitors, they've come a long distance to get here. Uh, so uh, we appreciate that. Uh, now, uh, what I'd like to do is I just have a couple of minutes since I am uh, uh, the uh, leader of the uh, Energy Efficient Electronic Science Center here at Berkeley, I wanted to mention some of the um, themes we have. We're not covering all of the different ways of switching. You'll hear uh, uh, all of those uh, here um, at the meeting, but uh, the types of research that we have going on here at Berkeley, uh, we have nanoelectronics. Uh, these are the themes of our center, uh, is basically to try to find a solid state or a semiconductor uh, millivolt switch. And uh, uh, there, uh, there, there's some discussion, is, is tunneling, is, uh, do you modulate the tunnel barrier or do you take advantage of sharp energy levels that might exist? And so that, that, uh, that should be interesting. We'll get into that discussion uh, during the day. Uh, we have, uh, as part of our theme, uh, nanomechanics. Uh, our leader is uh, Tsuje King Liu, who's uh, going to uh, speak uh, later on and uh, uh, on nanomechanics. And you can sort of see uh, what's going on here is that uh, uh, one of the reasons why uh, a nanomechanical switch for logic can be very efficient, it doesn't have to carry much current. In fact, it doesn't have to have very low resistance. Uh, at a kilo ohm, one is already well matched to the uh, load. Uh, in, um, in uh, chips, and uh, what that says is you don't need to make metal-metal contact, and when you, uh, and uh, so uh, you just need to maybe uh, decrease the space of two electrodes, and uh, you already uh, get enough uh, tunneling to have uh, one kilo ohm in the on state. So that's, uh, uh, that makes that uh, uh, approach very interesting. Um, the nanophotonic approach, we're going to hear uh, tomorrow from uh, Professor Ming Wu, uh, and uh, this is, uh, uh, it has to do with sources like making very small lasers that have very small current, but even more important than the sources are the photodetectors in the photodetector <laughs> circuits. Uh, finally, uh, nanomagnetics. Uh, it, uh, uh, it's very, very exciting, and uh, uh, we'll hear from uh, uh, Jeff Boker about that. Uh, there are many ways to use magnetism, but one of the great promises of using magnetic switches is you could actually, uh, at least in theory, end up uh, beating the land hour limit, and that is uh, to end up using less than kT uh, per logic function. And uh, that, uh, uh, that's, of course, a very, very long-range promise, but it's, uh, it was uh, laid out uh, by these uh, very great scientists, of course, first starting with uh, John von Neumann, and Rolf Landauer, uh, but finally culminating in uh, uh, Charles Bennett of IBM, who showed that uh, this KT limit uh, is something that can be overcome essentially uh, by, uh, 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 by recovering the energy using uh, highly uh, reversible systems, which uh, spins are. And uh, so uh, uh, that, uh, that's a very important uh, prospect. So that gives you some idea of what we're doing here at Berkeley. It's, it's not the whole story, but here at this conference, we're hoping to get the whole story because uh, we have uh, representation uh, from uh, uh, so many different research groups. I'm looking forward to, to meet you. You know, there's this attitude. We have these competitors in Europe or competitors in Japan, and I don't want it to be like that. I would much prefer uh, that uh, we share ideas and uh, we uh, develop this technology. Uh, the prospects are, uh, are very, very exciting in terms of how many orders of magnitude are left to go. Today, electronics is inefficient by six orders of magnitude. We are, we are six orders of magnitude away from the theoretical limits. And uh, this, to me, is very suggestive of uh, a different kind of Moore's law as we knock off those orders of magnitude one at a time. And I think we can best do that uh, with uh, a lot of cooperation and sharing of information. And that's what I'd like to uh, see happen at uh, this conference. So let me culminate then uh, with a uh, quotation uh, from IBM. Uh, it's usually IBM is a very conservative company, and, uh, but here they, they, they agree. It is time to reinvent the transistor. And that's effectively uh, what this uh, uh, conference is about. 
and um, uh, we have many different ideas, and I say let a thousand flowers bloom. We are in that stage right now, and so I'm looking forward uh, toward uh, hearing uh, the uh, various uh, presentations.